So, Bill, I have a question. Mm -hmm. You know, logical trees, um, this is not very concrete for me. Okay. I'm starting. What would you use to explain to okay. me what that means? I have a couple of examples that I use. Uh, the first one, the shortest one, is a little current reality tree that uh, I call the thermodynamics of eternity. Or is hell endothermic or exothermic? And I first did this presentation at a, uh, as part of a presentation at a TOC conference in Denver, Colorado in 1997. And uh, it would, I, I thought it was a good one to do because it has physics associated with it. And Goldratt was in the audience, and I was curious to see how he would respond. So uh, I'll go through the cause and effect logic with you on it. Okay. We start first with the theology. If people do not belong to more than one religion, and there are many religions then everybody represents all others to some religion. And if some religions preach that the soul of anyone not adhering to their religion will go to hell, in other words, all others, then all souls go to hell. Now, if any soul that goes to hell doesn't leave, then no souls leave hell. Now, if the world's birth rate is increasing and all people born eventually die, then the world's death rate is increasing. So if no souls leave hell and all souls go to hell and the world's death rate is increasing, then the number of souls in hell is increasing exponentially. Now, that's, that's the logic behind the number of souls increasing exponentially. That's the theology. Now we have the physics. If souls exist, and that which exists has some mass, then souls have some mass. And if souls have some mass, then a mole of souls has a mass. Now if we combine that with the conclusion of the preceding slide, which is the number of souls in hell is, ex is increasing exponentially, and this mole of souls has a mass, then the mass in hell is increasing exponentially. I see. Now, for temperature and pressure in hell to remain constant, the ratio of the mass of souls to the volume of hell must remain constant. This is n normal physics. It's Boyle's Law. And if the temperature and pressure, and for the temperature and pressure to remain constant, the ratio of the mass of souls to the volume of hell must remain constant, and the, and the mass in hell is increasing exponentially, then the temperature and pressure in hell will depend on whether hell is expanding at a faster or slower rate than souls are entering. Now, if hell is expanding slower than the rate of souls are entering, then temperature and pressure in hell will increase until all hell's, hell breaks loose. That makes it an endothermic reaction. Or, on the other hand, if hell is expanding at a faster rate than the rate of souls entering, then the temperature and pressure in hell will drop until hell freezes over. And that makes hell endothermic. Unfortunately, we can never find out which is which until we experience it for ourselves. I see. Yeah, that's right. And that is the uh, that is the uh, that's the physics of eternity. So, do you remember how? Eli Goldratt reacted yes, to, to this logical yes. tree? Yes, this caught him completely by surprise. And when I actually looked out of the back of the audience, he was doubled, doubled over in laughter. He thought that was so funny. So That's probably the only thing I ever did that he laughed at. <laughs> <laughs>